Thanks for joining us for a playoff edition of Flames 3 and 3. Aaron Vickers, Jermaine Franklin coming at you from the Scotiabank Saddle Dome. And it is no surprise, Aaron, that we are going to start off with goaltending. Who should be the Flames starting netminder for the first round of the postseason? My heart says David Riddick, but my head says Mike Smith, who, in my opinion, the Flames are leaning towards. I understand the decision if that's the way they want to go. Mike Smith down the stretch had a 1.94 goals against average and a 9.16 save percentage in 11 starts. That's the kind of goaltending you need for the Calgary Flames. You don't need a goaltender to outduel Philip Grubauer. You just need steady performances from your goaltender. Calgary was first in the NHL in limiting shots against at 28.1. If they can bring that effort again and get the goaltending from Mike Smith that they have had in the last month and a half of the season, they'll be fine. Philosophically, I think that the Flames should go with David Riddick, and here's why. I believe that if the Flames are going to go with two net miners and – there's no reason not to believe so. They pretty much split the wins 27-23. Um, I want the veteran netminder ready to come in when the team needs a win most. If the team wants to switch goaltending, chances are they're not going to be in a very good position. They will need a win right away in the postseason. To put a rookie netminder in that situation will be tough. To have Mike Smith, who has taken a team all the way to the Western Conference Finals before, I prefer to have him in that position ready to go because you know mentally he can handle it. Now, moving from the goaltending situation to the offensive situation, two of the best lines, most lethal lines in the league are going to be going head-to-head. -head. Is it a matter of which line produces more will have their team win the series? I don't think so, and if you look at it, Calgary's depth will really benefit them in this series. They had 11 players with 30-plus points this season. Colorado only had seven. The Colorado Avalanche top line, McKinnon, Landis, Gog, Rantanen, we're in on 40% of Colorado's goals. Calgary's top line of Goudreau, Monaghan, Lindholm, only 33.5%. We're talking a 6.5% gap. That's huge when you're talking about 200-plus goals. For me, Calgary's depth can carry them if the top line isn't at their best. And I have to agree with that. I think Calgary's depth will be a factor. But, but the Flames' top line of Goudreau, Monaghan, and Lindholm have to produce. They have to pick it up from the way they ended the season. The last 30 games, all of them averaged well under a point per game. They got to pick that up. So, no, they don't have to outscore the McKinnon and company line. However, they definitely need to produce to give the Flames the best chance to move on to the second round. And... There's always an X factor on every team that's successful in the playoffs. Who is your X factor for the Flames? Might be low-hanging fruit, but I'm going to go with Matthew Kachuk. You can scrap his 30-plus goals and his 70-plus points. His ability to agitate and get between the ears of the opposition is second to none in the NHL. Drew Doughty said as much, whether he said it directly or not. And, you know, they only play sporadically throughout the regular season. They've never met in the playoffs. Imagine having to face Matthew Kachuk seven times in a row. For that reason, he's my X Factor. And I'm going to choose Derek Ryan for the X Factor for the Flames simply because he is outstanding in the faceoff circle, second overall in the entire NHL. Plus the fact that he produced in the latter stages of this season, Derek Ryan, he has the trust of the coach, Bill Peters, and I think he could very easily be the X Factor for the Flames because he could very easily be put in a lot of different situations. For Aaron Vickers, I'm Jermaine Franklin. Thanks for joining us for this playoff edition of Flames 3 and 3.